Israeli army intensifies bombardment of Rafah months after declaring it safe zone. Last night it reportedly killed dozens of Palestinians. This morning it issued another mass evacuation order affecting hundreds of thousands of already displaced Palestinians. Around 1.7 million Palestinians are trapped in narrow area Rafah of around 8.5 kilometers long and 6.5 to 7 kilometers wide. This includes around 750,000 children. The IDF has dropped leaflets over Rafah, which was declared a safe zone by Israel, asking Palestinians to evacuate. But there is no place to evacuate as Rafah opening with Egypt is closed and other areas are already occupied by Israel. UNICEF spokesperson James Elder told Al Jazeera that an Israeli military offensive on Rafah would be horrific and could lead to a catastrophe upon catastrophe. Elder emphasized the urgent need for access to essentials like water, sanitation, and food, highlighting the failure of safe zones to provide adequate protection. He also criticized the Israeli notion of a limited offensive, citing previous experiences in Gaza where promises of limited impact were proven false. Hamas has agreed to a permanent ceasefire, reconstruction, and prisoner exchange. Mediators confirmed that the term sustainable ceasefire means a permanent cessation of military and hostile operations. In the first phase, there will be an exchange of 30 Palestinian prisoners for each Israeli prisoner. The withdrawal will take place in two stages, with a complete withdrawal outside of Gaza in the second phase. Despite that Hamas accepted the ceasefire and hostage exchange proposal, very violent and continuous bombardment on the eastern region of Rafab continues. Netanyahu is saying he will continue military operations in Rafa meanwhile, the families of hostages in the Tel Aviv protest for ceasefire. Many Israelis blocked roads and protested against the Israeli government, demanding Netanyahu to agree to the ceasefire deal that Hamas agreed to today. Hundreds of Israelis protesters take to the streets, marching towards Netanyahu's headquarters in occupied Jerusalem demanding him to accept the ceasefire deal agreed upon by Hamas. Since Israel has hit back at Hamas and brought it to accept its proposal, it should resort to immediate ceasefire to avoid any further blames of historic catastrophe and genocide, so that humanitarian aid can move into Gaza. The Palestine genocide must stop. The US and European countries should pressure the Israeli IDF to a ceasefire and help the surviving civilians in Gaza. Many Holocaust survivors have stood up for end to war in Gaza. Yes, I'm also here because I want Biden to stop funding the Israeli slaughter. And I want every penny of the money that we give to Israel, I want it to be used for the rebuilding of Gaza. I see what I lived through. Oh, as a child, I see my childhood replayed on a loop every time I see uh, a mother holding her child. I see my mother holding me during the Holocaust, during the bombing of the city of Hamas. I'm here for peace for Palestinians. This is time for immediate action and moving towards a lasting peace in the Middle East. Let us stand for peace and demand ceasefire now.